Big thanks to everyone at Honey Hunters Discord, specifically everyone in the Lorecraft channel, for always answering my recurring and possibly annoying questions. I have no idea if anyone covered this type of video yet, but anything related or close to my video is about 20 minutes or well, 15 minute long slog, so in a desperate attempt to hook you into watching, this video is all clumped into a mere 10 minutes of your time. And with as much enthusiasm as who tiles selling coffins to old people. So, without any more big words and mumbo jumbo, what happens if the traveler gets all seven elements? To start off this theory, we need to go deep down into the depths of Ankanamiya and its most recent lore. And the prime suspect for this theory is the Dainichi Mikoshi Tower. If you're wondering, why would the Dainichi Mikoshi have any relations to the Traveler getting all seven elements? Well, the Dainichi Mikoshi was created by Abaraku through the help of Easteroth, which is a shade of the primordial one, Panes. But weirdly enough, Easteroth, a god of time, taught Abaraku how to make light. Now why would a god of time know how to make light? The answer to that is sitting right on top of the Dainichi Mikoshi Tower itself. This spinning contraption atop the tower is the source of all light that touches Enkanomiya. No, I am not Mufasa. But no one really mentioned what and why it looks like this until now. Well, theoretically. See, my theory is that Abaraku was taught by Easteroth to harness the raw, true primordial elements of the baptismal bishops around them, and put all that elemental energy into a focus so they can create light. This contraption, which I'm going to call a prism, to be specific, one triangular prism and one square-based prism. Now, it may not look like an actual prism from what we see in real life, but let's just say that's how they did it in the world of Teyvat, yeah? Now, a new question is that why would they use bishops to make light? Aren't they just beasts or creatures that can evolve depending on the element? Well, to me, the bishops are the descendants of the seven dragon lords. And what are these seven dragon lords, you ask? They were the creatures that fought with fanes way back before Teyvat was even created. These seven dragon lords, theoretically, were the seven elements of Teyvat. And if you haven't noticed yet, each element of the seven sovereigns represents a color of the rainbow. Now back to the prism, if you focus all those colors, aka elements, pyro, geo, dendro, animo, hydro, and electro, they look a lot like how you would focus all the colors of the rainbow into a prism. And once we focus all those colors, we get light. The first iteration of a prism was by the mathematician Isaac Newton, who used a dark room, a hole in his window, and a glass prism. Prism, prism, prism. In contrast, Ankanomiya is, well, dark, has no light or a hole that has small bit of light, as well as the assumed prism atop the Dainichi Mikoshi is made of, well, whatever this is. But I think the way Hoyoverse told it is in reverse. The multiple colors, aka the bishops or the dragon lords, were used and pointed into a prism to make light, which is the Dainichi Mikoshi. If you're thinking of debunking the whole bishops not being able to make light, another point into this theory is that out of all the three realms mentioned by Sumi in the most recent quest, the bishop realm was more properly called the light realm. Hmm, yes, intriguing and highly disturbing. Not really. But didn't the event have the travelers throw light from each of the three realms to save the Dainichi Mikoshi? Well, no, not really. The whole event was to keep the Dainichi Mikoshi from being overrun by the Void Realm, which is the Abyss, hence Enjo and what he's been doing. So far to my understanding, there is no mention of how the Dainichi Mikoshi's light was specifically created, as well as what the three corners were supposed to represent, only that it was created by Easteroth through Abaraku. But if we check the three corners, rather the three locuses in Ankanomiya, it was where all the smaller light beams came from, meaning that it was where the smaller focus of raw primordial energies were. The word locus for the three corners also means the specific physical location of a gene or DNA sequence. Basically, a locus is a specific place for a specific gene. No, not that gene, this gene. Which not only makes the research of bishops more apparent, but also cements the theory that they used their primordial energies to create the Helios. Relating all that I said about Ankanomiya and putting it into the Traveler, we can basically think of the Traveler as a living prism. 
this would make their journey to get all the elements and get his powers back, a journey to collect all the colors of the rainbow and focus all those colors into a prism and produce light. And that light is the fruit of all elements put together. Hence why we need to go through all the other regions and resonate with all the statues of the seven. Funny because the word resonate means to reverberate or make an emotional connection or at least an experience that keeps coming back to you. Like let's say an echo or hotels singing. So if the traveler resonates with all the elements, meaning he becomes emotionally connected to all seven elements, he can then achieve the ability to connect with the true primordial elemental energy. And resonating with all the raw energies, will the traveler resonate with his true power. Now if you didn't know this, there's not much about this theory to expand upon other than just what I said. But if the light is the unification of all elements, what is the magic that the Abyss Order is using? It's said by Sumi that the Void Realm or Abyss Magic is poisonous to the bishops, or in more urgent terms, poisonous to elemental beings. Not only elemental beings, it can also affect humans in the human realm. Remember Tepe? Yep, that's what happens when the human realm comes in contact with the Void Realm. What I find strange though is that if the Traveler is on their way to achieve light, why is our sibling using abilities from the Void Realm? And how come our sibling isn't affected by the Void Realm even though both of them use the same light magic in the opening cutscene? Well, that is going to be for another video. Before I end this video, I want to thank Evangelist for bringing up this theory in the first place. Also, big thanks to Honey Hunter's Discord as well for always answering my random questions. I know I can be annoying sometimes, but I really like lore. And without them, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to make some of these theories and videos happen. So do me a favor and do yourself a favor and go to Honey Hunter's Discord. With that said, that's all the video is going to be about. Tell me in the comments below what you guys think of the most recent theory based on Ekonomia's most recent event quests. I get comments saying that my videos are underrated every now and then, so if it's not too much trouble, please share my channel or whatever video you want your friends or your own lore channels to see. It not only helps my channel's recognition but more importantly, it helps me convey to more players some of the more interesting and maybe outlandish theories that I have on Genshin. Of course, if you're already sharing my videos, you should be subscribed to my channel and have liked the video. If you haven't, then I urge you to do so. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Bye!